Hello everyone, in this video we'll be continuing with the Game Creator Basic series, covering the Behavior module. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So, let's go to the Package Manager and look up Behavior. And there we go, Behavior module, and let's hit Import, Import. We'll go to the Module Manager and we'll enable it. Let's also enable the examples and have a look at those first. Yep, we'll keep it. Cool. So when going to the examples, um, we have a couple. I'll open up the first one. And the first one is, uh, is pretty basic. Um, so as it says, the character from the back will wave its hands when the player is in line of sight. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that obviously we can see how perception works in the behavior module. So if we go to the scene and we select the character, we have a perception element and basically perception um, allows us to uh, tweak his field of view. So the default was set to 114, which is supposed to be what most humans in reality will have. Now, I will say that sometimes for games, you do need to uh, make it a bit smaller if you're doing stealth games, because otherwise it's, uh, it's a bit less fun, let's just say it like that. However, if you are creating a top-down game, for example, where stealth is not of the... Um, you know, not of interest and you just want to have a, uh, a character automatically attack the player, you can also set it to 360 and then as long as you're in the field of view, um, something will trigger. So yeah, pretty cool. Now, if we basically turn this way smaller, so 2, let's do 8, we go back to the scene and as you can see, nothing here happens even though we're in front of him and, well, that's actually, is too small, I mean. Yeah, it makes sense, it's too small. And then it will stop um, when we're out of view. So, really simple example, but it shows pretty much how it works. Then we have example 2 as well, which is a bit more uh, a bit more complex. I don't think we have any lighting in the scene, but... It doesn't look like it to me. Let's add a light. Maybe there was one and it was just really... Uh, really low I'm not sure yeah I think there was already one anyway doesn't matter um, so we'll play this one as well and um, basically it's a, you know it's a hide and uh, seek game and then as you can see in the other camera view we uh, we see him look for us and we have some uh, you know text showing up and yeah I can smell your fear that's a bit extreme <laughs> But basically, it works the same, and then once you know, once you see him, the uh, the enemy wins, and yeah, basically a game of tag, how and seek, however you want to call it. Cool. Now, the interesting thing, as you can see, this is working with uh, markers, which is a default game creator system to have, um, you know, enemies or characters move to a certain place. But what drives this all is really the behavior graph. So let's open this up and let's have a look. So as you can see, at the entry, so at the start, we have a sequence. So at first he's going to um, count, which is a subgraph, which shows a couple of uh, couple of messages. Then we select task, etc. So in order to make it a bit more interesting, we'll just go back to uh, back to our scene and. Nope, we don't save. We're going to create a behavior graph and we're actually going to give this one to the player, um, which doesn't make a lot of sense usually as you will do it for um, enemies, but you can, or NPCs, let's just say it like that, but you can do it for the player as well. So um, let's create one game creator uh, behavior tree. And then what you need to add. Um, on the player is uh, behavior um, 
perception by the way for the line of sight um, I'll add it just so we have it but we won't really need it in this sense but it's uh, it's cool to see how it works and then basically we drag this behavior on top of the player we have some parameters which basically are variables and we can have a look at the graph so in order to uh, start a behavior graph you always need a root um, otherwise it won't work then next up um, we have a composite and basically you have a couple of options here so we can have a selector and a selector works really simple and it works in order as well um, these numbers here one two are not for show um, they're there for a reason and we can give these tasks some conditions as well so um, let's do property um, if player is idle then uh, jump cool um, this condition is going to be um, it's going to be pretty similar so if player is uh, running then um, what shall we do then I have no clue um, let's find something let's find something interesting so he's going to do a gesture why not um, so we'll do a mask um, and let's do um, um, angry I don't know what it looks like um, way to complete so I'm going to drag this here I'm going to select the player and then we're going to hit play and the reason I'm selecting the player is because um, we want to see what happens and as you can see we're jumping now and it's switching between the two because um, well, you know, he's actually jumping and angry at the same time. But if we move, then you will see that only task 2 is running. Um, this is supposed to be the angry gesture playing, uh, but I'm lost the legs. So I'm not really sure what that's supposed to look like anyway. Um, but as you can see, um, this condition is not met. And that's why um, we're playing this task. Now, if I stop running, as you can see, um, because at some point when he stops jumping the player is idle it will go to task one and that's what it really is all about this was not the best example but you get the point um, a selector will choose priorities so one instead of two unless these conditions are not met and then we'll go to two and you can do that an endless amount of times now we can change this one to um, random selector as well and oh, with random selector um, we can remove these uh, these conditions you can keep them as well it doesn't really matter but it's going to randomly basically select one of the two so if I go back to the side view make sure to select the player and that's the angry gesture and then it's going to jump again and basically um, jump twice because you know it's random so it can hit the same one twice so the more tasks you'll have the less chance it will repeat the same thing then we have parallel which basically means we do them both at the same time um, and let's open this up now it's difficult to do both at the same time because on this one I did turn on wait to complete um, which might interfere I'm not really sure but yeah as you can see we're doing uh, we're jumping and doing the gesture um, which basically is just a weird arms at the same time um, so yeah that's pretty interesting um, other than parallel we also have um, random sequence and sequence which we saw in the example so if we turn on sequence let's turn this back here then theoretically it should first jump and yeah I mean these are all like milliseconds so it will just repeat the sequence and over and over again cool 
So now that we've uh, we've hit that part of behavior, as you can see, it works pretty similar to how Game Creator works in general. So we uh, we have a trigger, which in this case is the entry, and then we have conditions. Now we can make things a bit more interesting by having a selector based on that perception field we did. So um, basically C. So if the invoker which you normally select if you'd be an NPC can see the player then he's the player is going to jump um, if he and we can copy this over if he cannot see the player um, he's going to wave angry now obviously this is not all that interesting um, when it's on the player um, but we can turn it around so now it's for the invoker we're going to remove this from the player here and we'll put it on an NPC. There we go. We'll add perception and we'll add, let's make this a tiny bit smaller. We'll add um, behavior. And then we're going to drag in this graph. Now he can see the player, so he's jumping, and now he can no longer see the player, and he's doing some angry gesture. Maybe we should turn on, uh, turn this back on, wait to complete, remove that mask, and yeah, that's him being angry. Now once we're back in field of view, he's jumping again and and he's stopping again. Cool. So yeah, that's really how simple it works. Now what are those parameters that we saw um, on the player um, now on the character? So we have parameters here and basically that's if you want to use scene references. So as you might have guessed, this behavior graph lives project-wide and doesn't live inside of the scene. But what if, what if you want to reference something in the scene? So we can do that uh, a really easy way. So we're going to, uh, if he uh, cannot see the player, we're going to uh, do a change material. I'm going to copy that over here as well. We'll make one blue and we'll make one red. There we go. Yeah, and sometimes this happens, unfortunately. There we go. So let's drag in the red if he can see the player. And if he cannot see the player, it's going to be blue. Now I want to reference the plane we're walking on. So as you can see, um, it's outside of the project. So we can do inv we can do local variable invoker, and we'll call this plane. I'm actually going to uh, just copy it over again. Drag in the red. Then we're going to go to blackboard. This is where you add your variables and we're going to do game object as the plane is a game object. We'll do plane, hit enter, we'll go back to our scene and now here we're going to drag in that plane. As you can see now the floor is red because he can see us and then the floor is blue because he can no longer see us, red and well you get the gist. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how the behavior module works. As you can see, it's, uh, it's incredibly powerful, yet really easy to use, and it stays in the theme of Game Creator in general. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.